The Frank Starden Law of the Heart states that the volume of blood ejected by ventricle or stroke volume depends on the volume present in the ventricle at the end of diastole or end diastolic volume. For explaining this, let's quickly remind what is a stroke volume. During the diastole, blood passes into left ventricle. So volume of blood which is stored in the left ventricle in the end of diastole called end diastolic volume. During the systole, some amount of blood is ejected into aorta. This volume of blood called stroke volume. But some volume of blood remains in left ventricle in the end of systole. This volume called end systolic volume. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected by ventricle on each beat. So stroke volume is the difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. For explaining frank sterling law, we have frank sterling relationship curve. Horizontal axis represents end diastolic volume and vertical axis represents stroke volume. From this image, we see that if end diastolic volume increases, stroke volume increases too. For example, if end diastolic volume is equal 140 ml, stroke volume will be 70 ml. But if the end diastolic volume is 200 ml, it means that stroke volume will be 100 ml. In this illustration, end diastolic volume reflects length of myocardial muscle, because if the end diastolic volume increases, myocardium will be more extended by blood, therefore the length of muscle increases too. Thereby, length of every sarcomere as a unit of myocardial muscle increases. Stroke volume in this illustration represents tension of myocardial muscle. So if the end diastolic volume increases, in its turns the length of sarcomere increases, that lead to more powerful muscular tension and as a result stroke volume augmentation. For explaining why tension of contraction exceeds with increasing of sarcomere length, let's quickly remind myocardial cell's contraction physiology. When stimulus arrives to myocardial cell, membrane becomes depolarized, that lead to opening of voltage-gated sodium channel. Sodium, as an extracellular ion, enters to the cell, and in its turns it stimulates dihydropyridine receptors, that open L-type calcium channel, as a result calcium enters to the cell. Increasing of calcium concentration inside the cell stimulates ryanidine channels in sarcoplasmic reticulum that induces releasing additional calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum that called calcium-induced calcium release. High calcium concentration allows calcium binds to troponin. This is acting with myosin binding sites. In resting state, these sites are covered by tropomyosin, so tropomyosin prevents interaction between actin and myosin heads. Troponin in complex with calcium change configuration of tropomyosin, and after this actin-myosin interaction becomes possible. Cross bridges between actin and myosin form and then break, actin and myosin move past to each other, that lead to tension and contraction. The critically important concept is that magnitude of tension depends on intracellular calcium concentration. Now let's quickly remind the structure of sarcomere. Sarcomere is basic contraction unit which is bordered by Z discs. M line is located in the center of sarcomere. Actin filaments are thin filaments that are connected to Z discs. Actin has places for binding with myosin heads. Myosin is thick filaments which have myosin heads for connection to actin. So distance between Z discs is length of sarcomere. The tension of muscle depends on number of actin myosin bones or cross bridges. 
more bonds, more tension, more powerful contraction. L max of sarcomere is length when number of actin myosin bonds is maximal. According to this, tension is maximal too, that in its turn lead to maximal power of contraction, thereby maximal stroke volume. So, in Frank Starlin curve, it will be the higher point. For myocardiocytes, L max is 2.2 nanometers. But usually, in routine heart contraction, length of sarcomere is less than 2.2 nanometers. So, there are lower number of actin myosin bonds because some part of actin filaments collide in the center of sarcomere. According to this, some number of actin myosin binding sites can't contact with myosin heads that lead to less than maximal tension, contraction, and stroke volume. But when the end-diastolic volume increases, it means sarcomere length increases too, and get closer to maximal sarcomere length. So number of actin myosin bonds increases and get closer to maximal possible. Tension of muscle increases, as a result force of contraction increases, that lead to augmentation of stroke volume. But if the length of sarcomere increases more than L max, more than 2.2 nanometers, The number of possible actin myosin bonds decreases. That lead to reducing of tension, as a result force of contraction decreases. Therefore, stroke volume decreases too. That we have on the place when Frank Starlin curve starts to bend. This is the way how Frank Sterling mechanism works. But there are two additional lens dependent mechanisms in cardiac muscle that alter the tension. Increasing sarcomere lens increases calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum. And also increases the calcium sensitivity of troponin. that in its turns increases number of actin myosin binding places, as a result more actin myosin bonds are created, that lead to increasing of tension, power of contraction and stroke volume. If you like the content, press like and subscription buttons. Have a good day! Here we go.